Okay, my name is Nick Dutch, and today we're just going to, just for a laugh, if you can call it that, we're going to listen to a Pat Condell video entitled A God for Life. This should be interesting. Okay, I may stop the video and, you know, comment, see how we go. You know, people sometimes tell me, I kind of agree with you about religion, but you can be a bit negative. You should be... Him? A bit negative about religion? <laughs> no, wouldn't have thought it for a minute. More positive. Okie dokie. I'm positive that organized religion is irredeemably evil. I'm... Po what? Irredeemably evil. Now, yeah, there's some bad people in organized religions who do bad things. There's some terrible things about certain particular church bodies or religious bodies which basically don't actually necessarily help, including their policies associated with Africa. But on the other hand, that's only a tiny part, well, that's a part of the whole picture. And there's also people who are involved in organized religion who are basically not, essentially, irredeemably evil. So, you're talking shit from the outset. Positive, it exists for the sole benefit of professional clergy and... No, no, no. He's saying that religion exists, organized religion exists purely for the benefit of professional clergy. Now, basically, what the fuck? Sure, there is a social structure, a uh, thing about religion, and that's a very important thing to remember. People get involved in it because they want to have social structure. So the fact is that these people are given structure by their religion, their organized religion, and maybe that's the benefit that they get from it. Okay, Mr. Pat Condell hasn't actually thought about that. So it's not just for the benefit of professional clergy, it's for the benefit of the people who want to have that variety of structure in their lives. So essentially, Pat Condell, from the outset, I mean, what is this? It's um, 17 seconds into the video, we got two whopping great heaps of bullshit. I'm positive the only way it can possibly survive is by glorifying ignorance and brainwashing children, which... Glorifying ignorance and brainwashing children, and that's the only way that religion can survive, then why is it that, you know, adults choose freely to be a part of various faith organizations? Or well, the bottom line is, Pat Condell is, funnily enough, talking, uh, you know, a heap of shit here. It doesn't just exist through brainwashing children, because people can move out of the programming they received when they were younger. People are entitled to, they are free to, we're in a free enough society for people to be able to do that. Uh, as well as people who are brought up atheists actually wanting to be a part of some forms of religion to give themselves a sense of structure, a feeling of being under the protection of some kind of divine power and a wide variety of other different reasons. You know, there's, there is no singular reason for people to be a part of a religion. There's no singular reason for a religion or a religious body or an organized religious body to carry on existing because there's so many other little factors, the psychological factors, social factors, all the rest of that. And yes, of course, there are professional clergy, but is it solely for their benefit? Certainly not. You know, this is 22 seconds into the video. This, this could be a long recording Nick Dutch is doing today, I'm telling you that. I'm positive violates their human rights. So, he feels that giving children religious education classes is violating their human rights. What quality of education does Pat Condell have? I'm positive that the spiritual guidance you'll receive from a professional clergyman is on a par with the medical attention you'd have got from a 13th century doctor. Wait a second. Okay. Clergy have been indoctrinated. Yes, they have been. Okay, so they've got some restrictions. And some of them are a little more advanced. I mean, there's actually um, a, an organization, I think it's called the um, Organization of Pastoral Psychologists, or so Association of Pastoral Psychologists, which are people who have, uh, you know, a presence in religion, go to a, a place where they learn about psychology, and then they take that knowledge of psychology back with them to their various dioceses and all the rest of that, and they apply psychology within religion in a relatively rational way, because Pat Condell here is basically expressing the fact that, uh, or the idea, that extreme extremism is religion, and there's basically nothing else in between. But the fact that there are clergy people who are actually trying to learn from psychology, so that they can apply that to people, and actually help people to give them, not, you know, 3rd century or 13th century level 
uh, assistance, but to give them 21st century level assistance with good quality knowledge about psychology. You know, this completely destroys Pat Condell and Pat Condell's argument because he is a lying, cheating, stealing, evil person. Pat Condell is, okay. I want to make sure I got that straight. And that finding the meaning of life in organized religion is about as likely as finding a pub in Saudi Arabia called... No, 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 no. What does he mean when he says finding the meaning of life? Okay, finding the meaning of life. Think about those words for a minute. A meaning of life is promoted by a religion, which you can accept or you can build upon or build your own version of upon. Okay? That's what people tend to do. Right? If you're going to use the phrase finding the meaning of life, you are suggesting that there is a finite meaning of life, which he, Pat Condell, already knows. When plainly, Pat Condell knows jack shit. Okay? He's not bright enough to understand anything let alone the meaning of life if it exists. The fountain of youth, I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, uh. The shoplifter's arms. I'm positive that the more we allow clerical opinion to influence public life, the closer we get to totalitarianism. Religion. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Yes, I would admit that in certain parts of the world they do rather excessively um, combine the church and the state. In other parts of the world, they're rather against that. And in the United Kingdom, although we are basically officially a Church of England religious country with the Queen in charge as defender of the faith, in practice we are a religious country with an atheistic population that maybe has an uneasy relationship with the church. And there's those who are church going and there are those who are not church going. And some people, even people who are clergy people, think that it's a bit like being a civil servant working for the church because, you know, it's, it's a state or social organization rather than necessarily being a religious or spiritual one. So there are criticisms about the role of the church in the state. But as far as, you know, moving towards autocracy or moving towards totalitarianism because um, church life is affecting public policy, well, I, what a load of rubbish. This, this man has lost the plot. It's another bit of bullshit at 40, 48 or 49 seconds into the video. This is hilarious. ...history, past and present, proves this beyond any doubt. No, it doesn't prove this beyond any doubt. There are some organizations, there are some countries who have taken a rather extremist attitude towards religion and have applied it to the political life, yes. But basically, is that the vast majority of nations out there? To which the answer would have to, of course, be no. Now, in the UK, I mean, yeah, we've had Tony Blair, he um, joined the Catholic Church because, you know, whatever reason, he felt happy at doing that, and maybe that stopped him from going even madder than he already was, so, well, I mean, uh, don't you just despair when you hear this man speak? Is it just me who, I, I use that phrase a lot, you know, is it just me, you know what I mean? But is it really just me who just like thinks like, oh my word, do I really want to be a human being? You know what I mean? But most of all, I'm positive that if we put as much effort into engaging with reality as we do in trying to escape from it through religion, we might find out a bit more about it. And that would be very positive for all of us, except of course for professional clergy who do... So what he's saying is that we should be spending as much time trying to get closer to reality than moving away from it, you know, to the same ratio as we get people get involved in religion. But that depends upon what the definition of reality is. All right, and that varies depending upon which schools of thought you're talking about. So there's issues with that statement. I'm not going to go into them right now, but there's issues with that statement. And I don't think you can always say that religiosity is about escaping from reality. You, d you just can't necessarily say that. Because if you get a sense of relief of stress through being a part of a religion, then that can then he help you to be able to cope with the stress of life and get closer to reality. It depends upon how you use it and how you apply your mentality and your attitudes. But again, Pat Condell is suggesting that all of religion is just the extremes of religion, which is, of course, rubbish depend on our fear and ignorance for their very existence, and to whom therefore knowledge or wisdom or any kind of human enlightenment is about as welcome as a dose of the pox. So now he's going against science. You know, once the 
church in the UK had basically got over the issue of um, evolution. That was actually incorporated into some sermons that were you know, broadcast from the pulpit by C of E priests and vicars and orthodox clergy. So essentially that's an example of what you would call or consider a reason uh, or science to occur within the theological context. Okay, these days because of certain unpleasant people who are well known amongst the YouTube community such as, you know, Ray Comfort, Kirk Cameron and the rest of them, uh, some more extreme ideas and more negative ideas against science are returning. Uh, but that's not the vast majority opinion. There are plenty of people who are part of the church who accept science, who accept evolution. So, he's a lunatic. You know, Pat Condell, lunatic. The most genuinely positive thing I can say about religion is that it's a triumph of the human imagination. The most positive thing he can say about religion is a triumph of the human imagination. Well, let me, Mr. Pat Condell, tell you what I think the most positive thing about religion is. It takes individuals who are going through stress in their life, and it provides them with a little bit of an, uh, you know, an oasis of tranquility away from the stress of life. So they can basically get their energy back, and they can go back into the fray of regular life, dealing with their dysfunctional families, their drug addicted sons and daughters, um, you know, the neighbors who are criminals and noisy and under the influence of alcohol. Uh, and all the other chaos that they're experiencing, or the fact they've got some arsehole coming down to their house and threatening their life, or the fact that they've just lost their job and they're dealing with paying off their mortgage, and all these other things that they're dealing with, so they can go back into their life and be able to deal with these things with a bit more strength. That's one of the things that I would say would be good about religion. So Mr. Pat Condell has got a very slanted opinion, and he's a fucking ass. But it's also proof that there is no idea so absurd or self-destructive that we aren't capable of enthusiastically talking ourselves into it. And now Mr. Pat Condell is getting me a little irate. Okay, Not everybody on YouTube has seen me get a bit irate. I will try and control myself and try and compose myself. Humans are capable of more than Pat Condell can possibly assume. Humans can do much more than Pat Condell can possibly assume. We do not only come up with great ideas, we challenge them, we build upon them. We can take fiction and use that to give us strength. There are people who read the most peculiar forms of fictitious literature and use that to build aspects of their identity and their character and they can do so and still be functioning individuals who can exist in reality. Yes, these ideas have been made up or pulled out of someone's backside or whatever. But does that really matter? I mean, seriously, Pat Condell, does that actually matter in the grand scheme of things? To be honest, no, it does not. Um, and if you personally object to someone finding their little nexus, their little moment of peace and calm, then there has to be something wrong with you. Seriously, mate. Seriously. And I don't know what this is. Maybe it's some kind of biological need we have to do this to ourselves, to pretend that we've connected with something greater than ourselves, to cheapen... Yeah, like you and UKIP, huh? You connected with something bigger than yourself. All your fucking rhetoric is UKIP for Christ's sake. So UKIP this, UKIP that, you can fucking piss off. ...with boneheaded ignorance and righteous hypocrisy and then to ram it down each other's throats. Maybe that's what we're here to do in this life. Because if it is, we can count ourselves a huge success. <sighs> Maybe that's what we're here to do in... Yeah, fuck. That's quite positive. Uh, maybe not. You know, there are many things I don't understand about religion, as people never tire of telling me. For example, why somebody would kneel in a church asking to be delivered from evil. Why go in there in the first place? It's psychological. It's emotional. It's a basic human need to have some place where they feel comfortable. That's why they do it. They choose ritual postures because it does some good to the mind. They know it. Although they don't always admit it, there are people who actually go to church who are in fact atheistic, and they do so because it does them some good. Or 
why, if God is really so all-powerful and merciful, he doesn't simply forgive Satan, and then none of this nonsense would be necessary. All right, didn't you know that there are actually some Christian sects who believe that Satan has been forgiven, and that Lucifer is now at the right hand of God with Jesus Christ and having a wonderful fucking tea party somewhere? Didn't you actually know that? There are Christian sects who believe that Satan and Lucifer have been forgiven, and that the natural balance of the universe has been restored. Why can't he let that happen? He has, according to some people. What is he afraid of? You have to... What do you mean, what's he afraid of? The people interpret or reinterpret or misinterpret the idea of God in accordance with their own needs. Alright? If you go to a church in one particular denomination where everyone was brought up in the same faith, they say, go to the same fucking church all the fucking time, and they've, you know, have had the same stuff being poured into their heads, they're all going to have different interpretations of God, of theology, of Jesus Christ, and all the rest of that, because that's what people do. Get used to it. wonder, don't you? But the thing I find most difficult to understand is that if you have to worship a God, and clearly some people do, why choose a God of death, a God... What do you mean, choose a God of death? When the Holy Spirit is called the Waters of Life? What, what the fuck are you talking about, Pat Condell? Have you ever read the Bible? Do you actually know what you're talking about? Is there anything in there that you have based your entire idea that the God of the Christians is purely a God of death? I mean, he just said, a God of death. He didn't say something more complex, something which has some forgiveness in it associated with it, something that has some, something a little more aggressive associated with it. No, it's just the God of Death. You've got to be afraid of the God of Death. <sighs> Do you think that this is called a skewed interpretation, children? Hmm? 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 Just one particular point of view, just... You know, just cherry picked and just thrown out of people like... Did, 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 did. Do you think... Who wants you to hate yourself? Who wants... No, I don't think... No, 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 no. A God who wants you to hate yourself. Eh, no, because you're so nasty, you must hate yourself. Eh. No. People go to church to ask for forgiveness of sin so they can forgive themselves, so they can love their own life and love their own existence. He wants you to deliver yourself to him as a broken thing with wounds that need healing and to inflict those wounds... Yeah, and you are the most broken man I've ever had the displeasure to watch videos by. You really are, you are seriously a very, very twisted, evil man. You are saturated with wounds in your mind, in your very being, in your soul, in every single part of your aura. Yeah. You are a wound. Pat Condell, you are a walking wound. Yourself. It just doesn't make sense. And I know it's not supposed to make sense, Sorry, and that's no what sense. faith is all about, but this Fuck doesn't it. make sense on an are you insane level. Especially when you've got a ready-made God of life shining its... This doesn't make any sense on an have you gone insane level. Him, him, saying that. I've pointed out where he's wrong on so many different levels within the first... Two minutes and 58 seconds, okay? I've been recording for about 18, 19 minutes, okay? And that's two minutes, 58 seconds worth of him talking, and the rest of it is me telling him why he's such a complete wanker, okay? It's that simple. He's a fucking wanker. There are good, common sense, intelligent reasons why people need religion, alright? It's just an extra way of helping people deal with their lives. And most people agree to it, apart from the extremist literalists. And there are some people who are literalists, but who still have a schizophrenic mind and say, yeah, well, I accept the evolution and all the rest of that. But there's some people who don't, and those people who don't, well, they're difficult and dangerous, because they, like, latch on to, like, conspiracy ideas, and they latch on to all kinds of other strange and difficult ideas, and, uh, and have peculiar politics associated with them. Pat Condell, you're not one of them, are you? It's like on this planet every day. Because the sun actually is the source of all life on this earth. Our creator and our salvation, you might say. And it's the nearest thing to a real God that we're ever going to have. Without it, this planet would be just a ball of dead rock flying around on its own in the dark. So now he's suggesting you become a pagan sun worshipper. He goes on and on and on about how stupid and sick and twisted religion is, and now he's suggesting you become a pagan sun worshipper. Hmm. You know, like... And he was calling, like, other people, like, basically batshit crazy. Can you see that there's some kind of problem there? Like an Islamist brain cell. If you're a... Sorry. 
extremist, right-wing, fucking xenophobic, not just anti-Islamic, but anti-fucking everything, wanker. Christian, you might as well worship the sun because you do anyway. You just don't know it. So now he's saying that Christianity is sun worship. Now, this is scary. And this is scary because I've heard this kind of stuff before. From people who are into like the loose change or zeitgeist movement. Because these people think there's some kind of like major international conspiracy that goes back over like centuries and is orchestrated by the Freemasons and the uh, Christianity is a descendant of an ancient Babylonian religion and uh, basically the sun in the sky is representative of Lord Jesus Christ because you see it coming in the clouds yeah but only total mad people will promote those ideas because essentially it's only the extremists the serious extremists who would take to such a false interpretation of history and promote that to try and make their arguments seem stronger. Do you think that he's one of them? Do you think that Pat Condell is one of them? Christianity is really nothing more than astrology with attitude. The That's come straight from Zeitgeist. Now I'm very concerned. The entire Jesus story has been lifted wholesale from the sun god myth. And That's a lie not for the first time either. There are many other holy figures with exactly the same life story as Jesus, right down to the details. The virgin birth, the star in the east, the twelve apostles, the miracles, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and so on. Okay, with, with the development of any religion, it always takes from the past anyway, but completely taken from the past and like suggesting that this is a continue, continue, uh, sorry, I can't even say the word, continuation of the ancient sun worshipping religions is rubbish. And so on. The story has been told and retold time and time again, and it's all been inspired by the sun, the one true God. I he's just called the sun the one true God, but yet he's anti religion. How does that work? You say, but what about morality? The sun can't impart a sense of morality. Well, what a bonus that is, because the morality imparted by the God of Death is not a morality at all. The God of Death. So, a being that's um, there to try and teach people to forgive and care for people and care for the poor, that's the God of Death, is it? As opposed to the sun in the sky, which just scorches the deserts and helps us with the process of global warming and Fuck off. It's a raft of threats. Obey or be punished. That's... When a child is young, it's told to obey. So, Christianity has been written, or rewritten in some places, for the young. Then there's more complex forms of Christianity, and more complex sects of Christianity, which is there for people of a much uh, older, you know, generation. So there's different varieties of church or denomination of Christianity and variety of Christianity for people of different ages. And it's only for the children where they're actually told just to obey because that keeps them obedient in the household. That stops them from essentially becoming criminals so that the parents don't have to worry too much. And that's essentially the way that religion everywhere seems to operate. And that's defined by and created by and molded by society for the benefits of the young. No morality, and knuckling under to it has no virtue. It's the behavior of a trained animal. So you can put that morality where the sun doesn't shine, or wherever that may be. I'll take the golden rule, because it makes rational sense, and I'll... Rational sense. The word rational coming from a man who's basically promoting the same strange ideas that the conspiracy theorists believe in, who's an extremist UKIP supporter and is a fucking waste of space. Fuck, oh Jesus. Take it in the sun, and maybe you should as well. Uh. Admittedly, the sun is no more than a giant ball of burning gas, so whatever consciousness it may possess is unlikely to respond to your prayers directly, but you're already used to that. And we know the sun is actually there. We don't need to speculate about that or take anything on trust from people with their own agenda who don't know any more than we do and who... 
people who've got their own agenda. Yeah, like you, Mr. Condell. Hmm? You've got your own agenda, and you're trying to force it into all of us so we all become afraid of the nasty, scary European Union. <sighs> In many cases, no considerably less. We can feel the sun's warmth, and we can see its light breathing life into everything that lives. What more do you want from a god? Popcorn? And all we have to do is celebrate it. There's no punishment, no guilt, and best of all, no professional clergy. It doesn't get any more positive. So, he's extolling the, worship, uh, sorry, the virtues of worshipping the sun, saying there's no professional clergy, but he's got this career on YouTube, hmm? and he's basically being a professional clergy to you. Doesn't that give you a nice, warm, fluffy feeling inside? ...than that. Peace and a happy summertime to everyone, especially in those places where it's winter. Alright, that's the end of his video. Five minutes and twenty seconds worth, and I've been recording for approaching half an hour now. Because this guy is evil. He's a nasty piece of work. And he's a nasty piece of work who's trying to brainwash you through misrepresentations, through lies, and through using the same kind of <sighs> false history that the conspiracy theorists use to make their arguments stronger. Now, do you trust this man? And if so, why? Just why? He's just sitting there, coming out with extreme logical fallacies, and out and out lies. And all of this because he wants to portray himself as being some kind of sal you know, salvation to the British people, the destroyer of the European Union, and a supporter of UKIP's policies. I mean, this is crazy. What has he got in his information bar? Yep, he's got, he's got li uh, links to the conspiracy ship. It's all the it's all it's the conspiracy ship from like um, from Zeitgeist and Loose Change. It's all there. He actually believes and is promoting a falsely written history for the purposes of making a logically and rationally flawed argument stronger when he himself believes himself to be a proponent of reason. 